The staged combustion cycle, sometimes known as topping cycle or preburner cycle, is a power cycle of a bipropellant rocket engine. In the staged combustion cycle, propellant flows through multiple combustion chambers and is thus combusted in stages. The main advantage relative to other rocket engine power cycles is high fuel efficiency, measured through specific impulse, while its main disadvantage is engineering complexity. Typically, propellant flows through two kinds of combustion chambers, the first called preburner and the second called main combustion chamber. In the preburner, a small portion of propellant is combusted, and the overpressure produced is used to drive the turbopumps that feed the engine with propellant. In the main combustion chamber, the propellants are combusted completely to produce thrust. The fuel efficiency of the staged combustion cycle is in part a result of all propellant ultimately flowing to the main combustion chamber, contributing to thrust. The staged combustion cycle is sometimes referred to as closed cycle, as opposed to the gas generator, or open cycle where a portion of propellant never reaches the main combustion chamber. The engineering complexity is partly a result of the preburner exhaust of hot and highly pressurized gas which, particularly when oxidizer-rich, produces extremely harsh conditions for turbines and plumbing. Topic. History Staged combustion was first proposed by Alexei Isayev in 1949. The first staged combustion engine was the S1.5400 11D33 used in the Soviet planetary rocket, designed by Melnikov, a former assistant to Isayev. About the same time 1959, Nikolai Kuznetsov began work on the closed cycle engine NK9 for Korolev's orbital ICBM, GR1. Kuznetsov later evolved that design into the NK-15 and NK-33 engines for the unsuccessful Luna N-1 rocket. The non-cryogenic N-204, UDMH engine rode 253 using staged combustion was developed by Valentin Glushko circa 1963 for the Proton rocket. After the abandonment of the N-1, Kuznetsov was ordered to destroy the NK-33 technology, but instead he warehoused dozens of the engines. In the 1990s, Aerojet was contacted and eventually visited Kuznetsov's plant. Upon meeting initial skepticism about the high specific impulse and other specifications, Kuznetsov shipped an engine to the U.S. for testing. Oxidizer-rich staged combustion had been considered by American engineers, but deemed impossible. The Russian Road 180 engine also employs a staged combustion rocket engine cycle. Lockheed Martin began purchasing the Road 180 in circa 2000 for the Atlas III and later, the V, rockets. The purchase contract was subsequently taken over by United Launch Alliance ULA, the Lockheed Martin successor company after 2006, and ULA continues to fly the Atlas V with Road 180 engines as of 2019. The first laboratory staged combustion test engine in the West was built in Germany in 1963, by Ludwig Boelko. Hydrogen peroxide, kerosene fueled engines such as the British Gamma of the 1950s may use a closed cycle process by catalytically decomposing the peroxide to drive turbines before combustion with the kerosene in the combustion chamber proper. This gives the efficiency advantages of staged combustion, while avoiding major engineering problems. The Space Shuttle main engine is another example of a staged combustion engine, and the first to use liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. Its counterpart in the Soviet shuttle was the Rode 0120, similar in specific impulse, thrust, and chamber pressure specification to the SSME, but with some differences that reduced complexity and cost at the expense of increased engine weight. Variants <inaudible> 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 Several variants of the staged combustion cycle exist. Preburners that burn a small portion of oxidizer with a full flow of fuel are called fuel-rich, while preburners that burn a small portion of fuel with a full flow of oxidizer are called oxidizer-rich. The Road 180 has an oxidizer-rich preburner, while the RS-25 has two fuel-rich preburners. The SpaceX Raptor has both oxidizer-rich and fuel-rich preburners, a design called full-flow staged combustion. Staged combustion designs can be either single shaft or twin shaft. In the single shaft design, one set of preburner and turbine drives both propellant turbopumps. Examples include the Enigamarsh Road 180 and the Blue Origin B4. In the twin shaft design, the two propellant turbopumps are driven by separate turbines, which are in turn driven by the outflow of either one or separate preburners. Examples of twin shaft designs include the Rocketdyne RS-25, the JAX Ala 7, and the Raptor. Relative to a single shaft design, the twin shaft design requires an additional turbine and possibly another preburner, but allows for individual control of the two turbopumps. In addition to the propellant turbopumps, staged combustion engines often require smaller boost pumps so to prevent both preburner backflow and turbopump cavitation. 
For example, the Rode 180 and RS25 use boost pumps driven by tap-off and expander cycles, as well as pressurized tanks, to incrementally increase propellant pressure prior to entering the preburner. Topic: <laughs> Full flow staged combustion cycle. Full flow staged combustion (FFSC) is a twin shaft staged combustion cycle that uses both oxidizer-rich and fuel-rich preburners. The cycle allows full flow of both propellants through the turbines, hence the name. The fuel turbopump is driven by the fuel-rich preburner, and the oxidizer turbopump is driven by the oxidizer-rich preburner. Benefits of the full flow staged combustion cycle include turbines that run cooler and at lower pressure, due to increased mass flow, leading to a longer engine life and higher reliability. As an example, up to 25 flights were anticipated for an engine design studied by the DLR German Aerospace Center in the frame of the Spaceliner project. Further, the full flow cycle eliminates the need for an interpropellant turbine seal normally required to separate oxidizer-rich gas from the fuel turbopump or fuel-rich gas from the oxidizer turbopump, thus improving reliability. Since the use of both fuel and oxidizer preburners results in full gasification of each propellant before entering the combustion chamber, FFSC engines belong to a broader class of rocket engines called gas-gas engines. Full gasification of components leads to faster chemical reactions in the combustion chamber, which improves performance. Potential disadvantages of the full-flow staged combustion cycle include increased engineering complexity of two preburners, relative to a single shaft staged combustion cycle, as well as an increased parts count. Only three full-flow staged combustion rocket engines have ever progressed sufficiently to be tested on test stands, the Soviet Enigamarsh Road 270 project in the 1960s, the U.S. government-funded Aerojet Rocketdyne Integrated Powerhead Demonstration Project in the mid-2000s, and SpaceX's Raptor engine first test fired in September 2016. Topic. Applications Topic. Oxidizer rich staged combustion S1.5400 First staged combustion rocket engine used on the Block L upper stage. NK 33 Soviet engine developed for the never flown upgraded version of the N 1 launch vehicle. Later sold to Aerojet Rocketdyne and refurbished, remarketed as the AJ-26 used on Antares Block 1 launch vehicles in 2013-2014. In use on the Soyuz 21V. P-111 liquid oxygen, kerosene demonstrator engine developed between 1956 and 1967 at Bolko GmbH Road 170, Road 171, Road 180 and Road 191 a series of Soviet and Russian engines used on the Energia, Zenit, Atlas V, Angara and previously on the Atlas III launch vehicles. Road 171 and its RD-171M successor, minus 180 and minus 191 are derivatives of Road 170. YF-100 — Chinese engine developed in the 2000s, used on the Long March 5th, Long March 6th, and Long March 7th. R-1 An Aerojet Rocketdyne project partially funded by the United States Air Force as a potential replacement for the Rode 180 Russian engine. B-4 — Blue Origin LCH-4, LOX engine — using the oxygen-rich staged combustion ORSC cycle — planned to be used on the ULA Vulcan launch vehicle, which will replace the Atlas V and Delta IV, first flight test in 2019 and also on Blue Origin's new Glenn launch vehicle, with first flight test no earlier than 2020. Rode 253 — Soviet engine developed in the 1960s and used on the Proton launch vehicle's first stage. Later variants include the Rode 275 and RD-275M. SCE-200 — Indian RP-1, LOX main stage engine in development. Hadley — Ursa Major Technologies LOX, kerosene booster engine under development near Denver, Colorado. <laughs> Fuel-rich staged combustion RS-25 SSME — U.S. developed LH-2, LOX engine in the 1970–1980s, flown on the Space Shuttle through 2011, with periodic upgrades, and planned for further use on the Space Launch System after 2018. Rode 0120 — LH-2, LOX engine used on the Energia rocket. Le 7 — LH-2, LOX engine used on the H-2 rocket family. KVD-1 — Rode 56 — Soviet LH-2, LOX upper stage engine developed for the never-flown upgraded version of the N-1 launch vehicle. Used on the GSLV Mk-1. CE-7. 5. 
Indian LH2 locks upper stage engine used on the GSLV MK2. Topic: Full flow staged combustion. Road 270 USSR engine under development 1962 to 1970 for the Yaw 700 project never flown. Integrated powerhead demonstrator Demonstration project for the front part of a full flow engine, with no combustion chamber or other back end subsystems. U.S. project to develop a part of a new rocket engine technology in the early 2000s, no full engine ever built, never flown. Raptor SpaceX LCH 4, LOX engine in development. Topic. Current, past applications of staged combustion engines Topic. Future applications of staged combustion engines BFR's first stage Super Heavy and second stage Starship New Glenn Vulcan Topic. See also Expander cycle Gas generator cycle Combustion tap-off cycle Pressure-fed engine